as a pharmacy technician and I worked in rotational roles, um, gaining lots of experience in a range of different types of jobs for pharmacy technicians. And it was so interesting and it was really rewarding as well. Um, and I've continued my learning throughout my career uh, and I've worked in a variety of different types of pharmacy technician jobs. But now uh, my current job is lead pharmacy technician for education, training and development in Tayside. And it's my job to make sure that the pharmacy technicians and the pharmacy support staff are trained properly. So just to say really that pharmacy technicians are amazing and our pharmacy support workers. Um, pharmacy technicians use our knowledge um, based on the legal aspects of medicines and how medicines work on the body as and we use that knowledge to provide practical advice to help people to take their medicines safely and effectively. We are skilled in the supply of medicines, whether that's dispensing them, whether that's manufacturing medicines, preparation of injections, order and distribution of medicines. That's just to name a few of the broad range of roles that pharmacy staff are involved in. But basically, if you care about people, if you have good attention to detail, can work to a high standard in a high speed environment, then you could be a member of the pharmacy team. Um, so that's my introduction to me, but I'll pass you on to Debbie now. Um, Hi, thank you, Monica. So my name is Debbie and I'm a pharmacist here working in Nine Wells, which is where I'm based today. And I had started my career quite a few years ago um, basically studying up at Robert Gordon's University. So when I was at school, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I really enjoyed the sciences, but I also am a bit of a chatter. I'm a bit of a sort of like to talk to people, like to get to know about them and what makes them tick. And one of them, my mum's friends actually was a pharmacist and she said, why not come along and have a chat and find out about what pharmacies involve? I didn't well. want to. Oh. Didn't want to do medicine because I wasn't really into blood and gore and didn't really want to be up all night. But certainly um, the fact that pharmacy was looking at medicines and the impact it can have on people, that was actually what interested me. So I had the ability to talk to patients, to find out what makes them tick, what they want from their medicines, how they want to improve their health, at the same time helping them to take the right medicine. And we're going to talk about a few examples of where pharmacy staff get involved in taking those activities to patients. So to be a pharmacist, you have to study for a degree. It's a four year degree. And at the moment, there's two schools of pharmacy. There is one at Strathclyde and there's one at Robert Gordon's in Aberdeen, um, which meant that I could move away from home, which was quite nice because I'm from Falkirk. Um, so the schools round about um, us here in Tayside, they've got really good science departments and there's a lot of teachers who seem to be very good at encouraging um, pupils to think about chemistry as a career. What I would say is it's not all about chemistry. So if you don't like chemistry, don't think pharmacy is not for you because it also brings in the other sciences too. Um, but I'm going to now try and share um, our um, presentation so you can bear with me. I've got a wee video at the end, so I hope I can get it to work. But um, I hope that's enough to give you a taste start that within the pharmacy family, there is different jobs and there's one there for everybody, really, in my opinion. So um, we'll see how we go. My name is Deborah Stafford and this is Monica Hunter and we both are based in NHS Tayside. So if I can move on. So pharmacy, where can it take you? And we've talked about our jobs, but there is a whole myriad of um, roles out there. And I just really wanted to give you a flavour of the diversity of places that you might find yourself working in if you decide to go down the line of um, a pharmacy course or pharmacy career. So community pharmacy is where most of you will recognise um, pharmacy staff is working and um, boots in the high street, for example, or down in the village. That's where our first contact really usually comes with pharmacy staff. And then we've got other teams who work within hospitals, like for example in PRI, but also in Nine Wells or at White Hills up in Forfar or Arbroath Infirmary. You could find yourself working within a big department 
with lots of sub departments involved. So we've got different um, areas of the service that provide like the injectable drugs. So drugs that are put into people's veins, drugs that are given to the little neonates in the special care baby units. We also have um, the oncology, the chemotherapy agents, and they are all provided by a particular part of the hospital pharmacy known as the aseptic department. Then we've got the pharmacists and the technicians and support workers who are out working on the wards, speaking to patients and speaking to the medical teams about the medicines that patients are receiving. But you might also come across, well, maybe not at the moment because we're not getting into GP practices, but you may come across in the future the pharmacy team who work within your GP surgery. So they work with the um, clinic nurses and they work with the receptionists to make sure that patients actually get their prescriptions on time, that they're accurate and also that they are monitoring the effect of these medicines on patients. So there are the sort of three main buildings that you will find um, pharmacy staff working in. But we also have pharmacists and pharmacy technicians who work within industry. So all the information that's out there at the moment about the new, new COVID medications, the new COVID medicines that are coming forward, pharmacy staff have been involved in developing these medicines and researching the safety of them. And that has happened over a really short time. It used to take up to 10, 20 years sometimes for new medicines to come through. But, you know, that's where pharmacists are involved with that development, with um, taking things forward, making sure that there are new treatments available for patients in the future. And along the way, there's all those clinical trials and safety checks in place, and we have staff who are involved in doing that all the way, whether it be at small trials in industry, but then it could be multi-centre trials across the UK and across maybe Europe, looking at clinical trials and developing the processes to help get these medicines to patients. And pharmacy staff can find themselves involved in that type of work. And really the crux of it is that we are the experts in how to get medicines to patients and how to make sure that when they get to the patient that they're used safely. Pharmacy is also involved in lots of other health and social initiatives. So I just really wanted to give you some examples to give you a flavour of the types of things that you might not necessarily have associated with pharmacy in the past. So I'm sure you'll have seen in the news the COVID treatments, as I've said, those trials and implementation. As I've said, we were there um, involved. I not personally, but they were. Um, the logistics and administration, those Pfizer vaccines that have to be frozen um, and kept in freezers. Pharmacy staff were really involved in making sure that that could happen, that that in vaccine could get down to Dewar ice rink safely quickly in time to be given to patients and it's really important that that um, the wider healthcare team knew about how to keep themselves safe when they were handling something so cold as well as the patients. Also, I know that you're all that in that process of vaccines at the moment. Um, I don't know when it's going to happen for you, but we have pharmacy staff. I have a pharmacy technician who is a lead for the vaccine services. And every year she's involved with making sure that we've got the right supply for you, that those supplies are going to be available in the school so that the nursing staff who administer them they can get them to you as soon as possible and as quickly as possible so you can get it over and done with. Um, but you know those different, there is a really big vaccine programme where you've got pharmacy right at the centre helping the team deliver. And also we have the naloxone um, supplies to the police force. Um, again, pharmacies involved with highlighting to Scottish government, highlighting to um, local sort of authorities about the importance of um, the impact that patients will the public who have unfortunately overdoses with um, illegal drugs. Naloxone has come in there and that is very much saving lives. And again, it's something where pharmacy have been able to help make an impact and share their knowledge and expertise to be able to help um, other members of society do well for um, the wider community. Now, I know you're all really into the green um, agenda and it's just to let you know that, again, pharmacy is involved there. I don't know if anybody has already maybe got a sibling who has got the Cub Scout badge, which um, shows that you've done a little bit of um, investigation and work into antibiotics in wastewater and the animal food chain. What is the impact of that antibiotic that you're prescribed by your GP on the wider um, environment? And we have pharmacists and pharmacy technicians 
working with Scottish Government looking at these initiatives just now, thinking about how we can help prevent problems further down the line after a prescription has been written. Also, anybody out there who's maybe asthmatic or knows anybody who has who uses inhalers for their uh, breathing, we're working with the industry to try and reduce plastic and think about packaging for medicines. So that's something where um, pharmacy technicians and pharmacy staff pharmacists will get involved with patients explaining maybe why a prescription has changed. Because quite often somebody sitting at the computer in the GP reception will just say, oh, I'll just change that because this is the new medicine that we're using today. But the patient needs to know why that is and needs to understand so that they can turn around and say, actually, no, I don't want my medicines changed. So you'll find that pharmacy technicians and pharmacists are getting so involved with patients and actually being an advocate for the patient with the medical team as well. Also, we don't want you stockpiling medicines at home, so we work together to try and reduce waste and there are different needle exchange systems which um, are used for patients where they're injecting drugs, but they can bring um, as a habit that's not so healthy, but they can bring back their needles to the pharmacy um, for disposal and not leave them lying about in communities. And then just finally, another um, health and social initiative I just wanted to raise with you. You may have heard about the Ask for Annie um, campaign where all community pharmacies across Scotland have signed up to be part of this campaign where anybody who has had experience with domestic abuse, it's a safe place that they can go to their community pharmacy and um, where they can go in and ask for Annie and then a member of staff will take them to a consultation room and have a conversation about what might need to happen. So it's just an example really to share with you about where pharmacy is being in the centre down in the local village in the sort of big cities also is there to support um, not just about medicines but also about public health and safeguarding in general. And I hope that wasn't too quickly through what for me is a huge area of pharmacy. So I'm going to hand over to Monica now who's just going to take you through some of the staff roles. Yeah, so um, the next few slides will give you an idea of the different roles within the pharmacy team. And there are three main groups of pharmacy staff, as we highlighted earlier on. So the first group I'm going to look at is pharmacy support staff. And you can see on the slide there, there's a range of different types of roles. But, you know, there are there are lots more and we can't put them all on these slides. So it's just to give you a flavour. Um, but pharmacy support staff are involved in dispensing. Um, they're involved in the supply of medicines and products. They're involved in stock management and distribution. And they also work in the wards, checking, making sure that ward stock is correct and they have enough um, to deliver their services. They also help to deliver with all the pharmacy services that we provide, not just traditional pharmacy services, but also aseptic and manufacturing. Um, and also they have other types of roles, including um, medicines information and being involved in updating and maintaining information and data analysis. So that's just to give you a bit of a flavour of pharmacy support staff. And just so you can see the slight difference, the pharmacy technician roles is the next slide. Um, so where we said before the, the pharmacy support staff are mainly involved in dispensing, the pharmacy technicians then are the ones who carry out the final accuracy check on dispensed medicines. Um, they're involved in medicines management um, tasks and that can be in patients' homes, it can be in the wards, it can be in community hospitals. Um, Pharmacy technicians are involved in aseptic dispensing. You may not have heard of that before, but you will have heard of chemotherapy um, and where patients have their uh, medicine provided in injectable form and it has to be made up specially for an individual. So pharmacy technicians are involved in, in producing um, these medicines. Um, they also carry out medicines compliance assessments. So this is where it's face to face with a patient and just to find out how people are actually taking their medicines, identifying any issues and seeing if they can help make things a bit easier for the individuals. Um, 
pharmacy technicians are also involved in promoting health and well-being. So you may have heard of um, smoking cessation, people who, who start smoking and then they realise what a bad thing it is for your health and they want to give it up. They can get that kind of support from their community pharmacy, as well as lots of other types of health improvement campaigns. Um, and generally speaking, pharmacy technicians provide advice uh, to people on how to take their medicines. Uh, so I'll just pass you on to Debbie for the pharmacist roles one because she's the expert in that. Sorry, um, pharmacist roles. So from the point of view of what is the difference, I suppose, from what we do, we have a lot of overlap with our roles, but in hospital, certainly um, we work with members of the healthcare team to ensure that, as I said, people get maximum benefit from medicines that they are prescribed. We talk about making sure that the patient's getting the correct dose, the correct formulation and also correct duration. So, for example, if it's a little baby in special care baby unit, we have to sort of calculate dose and um, to make sure that we're not going to be giving them too much but at the same time make sure it's effective and obviously sometimes patients as they get older as well their um, body doesn't handle medicines quite as well as it they maybe did when they were younger so we have to adjust doses and pharmacists get involved speaking with them um, prescribers very much around making sure it's safe for the individual patients and the correct formulation for example we know that children don't necessarily like to take tablets so is it maybe available as a liquid form and we will get involved in discussing the best way so that somebody can actually take their medicines. The pharmacy first service is also a service that's provided in community pharmacy and the community pharmacy staff team there will provide advice. The pharmacist will come and speak to you um, and ask you some questions. They're not being nosy. They're basically asking you questions so that they can help you and you can get quite a lot of treatments available for acne, for cold sores. These are just some examples of some of the um, conditions or symptoms that you can go to your pharmacy and they will be able to give you um, a supply of a treatment to help with your signs and symptoms. But equally, they may also tell you it's worth you going to actually see your GP. You might need to go to hospital or have a review. So the pharmacy first name for the service comes from the fact that we don't want everybody knocking on the door of a GP practice or going to an E&E department if a pharmacist can help you first. And that's um, the sort of whole ethos of the service. OK, <clears throat> I'm now frozen. There we go. So what qualifications will I need, Monica? Do you want yes, to? So, yeah, you can see um, that there's something for everyone here for pharmacy. Um, there is a huge range of levels of qualifications. Um, no formal qualifications are currently needed for a pharmacy support staff role, but you will need to have skills in numeracy, accuracy, attention to detail, so important. You need to have good written and verbal communication skills, and you need to be really organised. Now, these skills, although um, I've said they're needed for pharmacy support staff, are needed by the whole pharmacy team. Um, but the training that the pharmacy support staff get is actually given in-house. Um, for pharmacy technicians, you do need to have, as a minimum, four NAT5 qualifications, and they must be in English, Maths, Chemistry and Biology. OK, so um, you can see there that's a step up from pharmacy support staff. Um, and then you would then further go on and do an SQA diploma, which would be done while you're employed as a pharmacy technician. And registration is required for, uh, for pharmacy technicians as well. And in the pharmacist column for qualifications, you can see that you need hires uh, in order to get a place for this. So chemistry, biology or human biology, maths or physics and um, and English and the M farm is completed at university followed by a foundation training year and employed in a registered pharmacy um, and also there's a requirement for registration uh, at the end of the training as well. I'm just um, going to kind of go through this quickly because I know that the time is running out. We only have a few minutes left. 
So if we could just go on to the next slide. And I know everyone is really interested in what kind of salary you're going to get paid. So on this slide, I'm not going to go into it, but you'll be able to see this after and you'll be able to compare the different salary types. Um, and obviously we're re remunerated for the types of roles that we do. So um, I think I'll not go into that one in any depth and we'll just go on to the next slide, which speaks about the training um, for pharmacy support staff. Now, as I said earlier, all of these bullet points that you can see on this slide is provided within the workplace. So all of that you would need to be employed as a pharmacy support staff worker. And then within that first year of employment, you would work your way through all of these training points there and you'd be fully supported in that. Um, so we'll just move on to the next slide. For pharmacy technician training, um, this is actually, again, you need to be employed as a pre-reg trainee pharmacy technician and the qualification is a, called a diploma in pharmacy services and there are two courses within that one is an SVQ, which is set at level eight, and the other is a professional development award, which is an underpinning knowledge program. And you would complete that over two years in the workplace. You get time for study, but it's about learning as you go. So you're working and learning and getting paid at the same time. Um, within that. I also think it's, this is a great opportunity for me to tell you that a new technical apprenticeship is being launched um, and this is going to mean that there will be an annual recruitment um, which has been supported by the Scottish Government for up to 150 technical apprentices, um, uh, sorry, apprenticeships um, each year in Scotland and Tayside should get 12 of them each year. Uh, so that's new, exciting, and it means that there's ongoing regular opportunities for people over the coming years if you want to be a pharmacy technician. Debbie? Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, thank you. I think it is really exciting, um, Monica, that we're going to have that annual opportunity for people to take on that role and training. So um, for pharmacist training, just a quick quiz through, as I said, it's four years um, as an undergraduate course, so you would need to get your UCAS form up to speed for that. During that four years, you will spend up to 11 weeks in total in the workplace learning. So you could we may be going to hospital, community or a GP surgery, but you might also visit areas such as care homes, Homes, NHS 24 hubs and also prison pharmacy and um, substance misuse teams as well. We have a variety of um, opportunities for that in workplace learning. You will then do one year working as a trainee pharmacist after you graduate and you would practice your patient facing skills. So getting involved with consulting with patients and clinically assessing signs and symptoms. And once you've completed that year, at the moment, there is an assessment at the end of it and you would join what's known as the professional register. So we have a regulatory body who makes sure that we um, meet certain standards to be able to provide a safe service to the patients in public. So once you've actually registered, like Monica said way back at the beginning, it's a continual lifelong learning in pharmacy. Everything changes and advances um, going forward. So you would start your professional development by developing a portfolio that showcases your skills and behaviours as you travel through the different steps of uh, being a foundation pharmacist, moving on to being an advanced practice pharmacist, an advanced specialist, and maybe ultimately being a consultant. There's not many consultant pharmacists in the world. Um, basically, for one, you might have a cardiology consultant pharmacist, only one in the whole of the north region of Scotland. So at the moment, though it's not the same as medicine, although the word is the same, but we would be looking for pharmacists mainly to be working in the advanced level of practice um, in their day-to-day -day job and that would be in community, hospital or in academia or in um, the sort of GP surgery. So from the point of view of how do you apply UCAS, as I've said, if you were going to be doing the pharmacist role, RGU and Strathclyde at the moment are the two schools of pharmacy. There may be a third one in Scotland by the time you guys come forward to applying, but there are obviously loads of schools of pharmacy down in England, but these are the two we have currently in Scotland. And the NHS Scotland National Recruitment Portal that Monica mentioned there gives information about the new um, recruitment campaign for um, the pharmacy technician 
um, training programme. Pharmacy support workers, Monica, that would be through Indeed and normal job adverts. Yes, yes. Just yeah. keep looking on the, the NHS Scotland jobs website and type in yeah. pharmacy and you can have a look and see whatever comes up will appear on that website. Yeah, but it's really important to think about those other skills as well. Um, we were talking about for the pharmacy support workers, they're common across all of the pharmacy roles. So good communication skills. Think about the busy environments, getting used to practicing and meeting deadlines and being able to prioritise multiple tasks. Think about, you know, do you want to maybe get yourself a wee weekend job in a pharmacy? If you are interested, that is a good way to find out if it's for you and also to develop those team working skills. So as much as it's about your academic, it's also about the other things that you can add to your CV, those other skills and um, ex experiences that you've had. So if you were interested in pharmacy, Monica and I both work with the work experience team here in NHS Tayside and I am fingers crossed hoping with COVID that we can start having some pupils back into the service just to give a flavour um, to see what it is that we can offer as a career for people in the future. So there's some useful websites um, that are listed that we can share with you. Um, there is also two handouts that I've made available to um, the team to be able to give to the career um, advisors in the schools to pass on. If, um, if people have any questions for Monica and Debbie, could they put them in chat, please? And then I'll hand over to Lynn, who will finish us off. OK, brilliant. Thank you. That was amazing. Who knew that you guys do so much? It's been a real learning journey for us to speak because you're right. You always think of pharmacy being the person in the the, the chemist in Timbrits yeah. or whatever. You don't know about all these other jobs that are behind there. So that's really brilliant. Um, any questions, please, folks, type it into the chat and we can ask them. Um, good. You said that N5 miles was necessary. Let me just open that up. Thank you. Miss Kelly says you said that NAT5 maths was necessary. What about NAT5 application of maths? Would that work? I have no idea. I would need to have a look um, on the SQA website. But I would imagine that it would, as long as it's a SCQF level five, because what we're looking for there is skills in numeracy, because obviously calculating for prescriptions for medicines for doses so we're looking for numeracy skills so as long as you have that with a qualification that gives us these skills at a minimum of SCQF level five that would be acceptable yeah I know yeah. I didn't know about application of maths until this year <laughs> so, yeah I think that that's one I would always double check with the course provider as well yes, yes. Okay. And some, someone's asking what is SCQF level five? That is the Scottish Credit and Qualifications Framework. So NAT five is at SCQF level five. NAT four is at SCQF level four. That's the framework that it comes from. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. How are we doing, Deborah, in terms of your video? Do you think we're going to get a shot at it? Yeah. You're... I think I think I should be OK. I think I was just a bit confused at the beginning and I okay. clicked the wrong box. So okay. we'll give it a go. If there's okay. no more I see, questions. I see there's one more question being typed just now. Let's have a look and see what that is. Mr McGuinness is typing something. Um, while we're waiting for that, we've still got a couple of minutes. So while we're waiting for that, Monica, what made you decide that you wanted to go into pharmacy? You said you started when you were still doing your hires. Yes, I had just completed my hires and I had done um, all the sciences and maths and I was interested in science subjects. And basically there was an advert in the local paper at that time. It was a long time ago, I have to say. Um, but yes, there's been a lot of different people coming to pharmacy, but it really appealed to me. I am really a person who um, likes to be organised. Um, I like to see um, I like to know exactly you know how things are done in a certain way I like to be um, accurate um, procedures are very important for pharmacy technicians so everything has to be done to a certain standard um, and I think also the caring aspect of working in the NHS as well where you actually feel like you're doing a job that makes a difference 
to yeah. people's lives. Yeah. You, you can Brilliant. make an impact and you can help people. Brilliant. We've got a quick question there for asking how long is the course to be a pharmacy technician? It's a two year training programme and it takes just under two years to do the course. Um, so you start in your employment and then you're inducted into the training programme. You will complete the training programme, hopefully just within two years, and then there'll be time to register with the General Pharmaceutical Council so that at the end of the two year programme, you can register as a pharmacy technician and get a job as Brilliant. a pharmacy technician. Brilliant. Um, brilliant. OK, Deborah, we'll watch the video and then once we're finishing the video, I've got a couple of quick questions to put out to all the schools. So please don't run away immediately. So nope. we'll have a quick watch of this video and then I'll ask the questions to the schools. So thank you. OK, and Lynn, if you could put your thumbs up if you hear it. <laughs> But if you understand just a little bit 